assalamu alaikum today the topic of presentation is chronic pyelonephritis so we have uh, classified the pyelonephritis into two types the acute and the chronic we have already studied the acute pyelonephritis so today we will study the chronic pyelonephritis when the offending agent of uh, the disease persist or uh, the risk factors persist so offending agent or the risk factors if they persist for long time so the acute pyelonephritis will progress to chronic pyelonephritis chronic pyelonephritis Understand? Yes. When the offending agents that uh, that should be the bacteria because we have already studied that pyelonephritis is bacterial in origin. Mm -hmm. So the offending agent that is bacteria are the risk factors. We have already studied that that may be diabetes or maybe uh, stresses of the urine or maybe uh, occurs during the pregnancy. So when these factors persist for long time. Then the acute pyelonephritis will progress to the chronic, chronic pyelonephritis. So now we will study that what will happen uh, in chronic pyelonephritis. In chronic pyelonephritis, the hallmark of the chronic pyelonephritis is sclerosis. are fibrosis it means in chronic pyelonephritis the main feature will be the sclerosis or fibrosis of the interstitium and tubules of the kidney and during the chronic pyelonephritis we will find interstitial Inflammation and scarring of a renal parenchyma. So, in chronic pyelonephritis, we will find interstitial inflammation and along with that, there will be some uh, healing process. So, uh, as a result of healing process, we will find the scarring of the renal parenchyma and associated with these two conditions, we will find and deformity of pelvic glacial system so these two are the main characteristics of the chronic pyelonephritis the first one is the interstitial inflammation and the second one is the scarring of the renal parenchyma and with these two conditions there will be associated the visible scarring and deformity of the pelvic glacial system. system now few words about the pelvic glacial system that what is the pelvic glacial system is this is our kidney and we know that we have a renal pyramids in it
something like that my diagramming skill is not perfect so these are renal pyramids and these are renal papillae yes. and these renal papillae opens into the calyces minor, minor calyces and these minor calyces then open into the major, major, major calyces. calyces and these major calyces open into the pelvis. pelvis so this whole system is called pelvic calycial system. system which comprises of the pelvis of the minor, kidney minor, and the calyces. minor and major calyces so pelvic calycial system comprises of pelvis plus minor and major calyces so in chronic pyelonephritis we will find interstitial inflammation scarring of the renal parenchyma and associated with that there will be the visible, visible scarring, scarring and deformity of the pelvic system System. system so in patients with chronic pyelonephritis there will be a long history of urinary tract infections those patients which have chronic pyelonephritis they will have a long history of urinary tract infections and they can be either a long standing infection UTI or it can be recurrent recurrent urinary tract infections, infections. So in patients with chronic pyelonephritis there will be a long history of the urinary tract infections and that long history can either be a long standing urinary tract infection, infection or recurrent urinary, urinary tract, tract infections. infections. So now we will move to the types of chronic pyelonephritis. The chronic pyelonephritis is divided into two types. The first one is chronic obstructive pyelonephritis and the second one is chronic reflux associated pyelonephritis pyelo nephritis this type of chronic pyelonephritis is due to the obstruction of urinary tract if there is any obstruction of the urinary tract that will lead to the urinary tract infections either a long standing urinary, urinary tract infections or the recurrent urinary tract infection and that will lead to the chronic pyelonephritis so obstruction of the urinary tract causes infections we have studied it in acute pyelonephritis now uh, i will say a few words again about this that why obstruction of the urinary tract causes urinary tract infections first of all the first reason is the obstruction of the urinary tract causes stasis of urine and we have already studied that if there is stasis of urine so the normal flushing mechanism of the bladder is lost and the organism will not be flushed from the urinary tract and that can uh, easily allow the organism to attach to the mucosa of the urinary tract and can cause the infection 
and the second reason is that if there is stasis of the urine that provide a medium to the organism to grow in the urinary tract so it will be easy for the organism to move around the urinary tract and attach to the wall of the urinary tract and can cause infection so now how obstruction of the urinary tract can occur so the first cause is urinary stones if there are any urinary stones that will cause the obstruction of the urinary tract and second one are obstructive lesions and these include tumors number second endometriosis in females and number third is retro retonian fibrosis these conditions causes the obstruction of the urinary tract that will lead to the stasis of the urine and that allows the organism to attach to the mucosa and causes the infection the first one are the urinary stones the second one obstructive lesions that include the tumors endometriosis in females and the third one is the retroperitoneal fibrosis that will extend up to the ureter and their fibrosis will occur in the ureter and will cause the stasis of the urine and obstruction of the urinary tract now the chronic obstructive pyelonephritis can be unilateral or bilateral unilateral mean that one kidney is involved and bilateral mean that both kidneys are involved now in which condition it will be unilateral and in which condition it will be bilateral so if the obstruction is above the level of the urinary bladder i have drawn this diagram and see carefully that th these this blue dotted line if the obstruction is within these regions above the level of the bladder either here in the ureters or in the pelvis then the chronic obstructive pyelonephritis will be unilateral. unilateral and if the obstruction is at the level of the bladder or below the level of the bladder that is at the level of the urethra then the chronic obstructive pyelonephritis will be bilateral understand i said if obstruction is above the level of the urinary <laughs> bladder at the ureters or in the pelvis then chronic obstructive pyelonephritis will be unilateral. unilateral and if the obstruction of the urinary tract is at the level of the bladder or below the level of the bladder then chronic obstructive pyelonephritis will be bilateral. bilateral in chronic reflux associated pyelonephritis we have an, a congenital anomaly in which there is and sufficiency of as we have already studied like these are all beautiful kidneys and the ureters comes down and here we have bladder so these ureters do not enter the wall of the bladder perpendicularly but they enters the wall of the bladder obliquely like this like this then open into the urinary bladder so if 
these ureters enters the wall of the bladder perpendicularly then the ball wall mechanism is lost and there will be a reflux of the urine backward mm. from the bladder into the mm. kidney so there are two type of uh, reflexes the one is zyco reflex and the second one is intra renal reflex and these two reflexes will bring infected bladder urine And there will be recurrent urinary tract infection due to the insufficiency of the uterine vesical wall. There will be a vesical uterine reflex and intra-renal reflex. And due to these reflexes, the infected bladder urine will be pro propelled up to the kidney, and there the organism will cause the recurrent urinary tract infections. And with recurrent urinary tract infection, there will be a fibrosis. And we have already said that the hallmark of the chronic pyelonephritis is fibrosis of the kidney, interstitium of the kidney, and the pelvic glacial system. The chronic reflex associated pyelonephritis can be unilateral or bilateral. It is like uh, we studied for the chronic obstructive uh, pyelonephritis. So, when the ureter vesical wall of one side is insufficient and cannot oppose the backward flow, so we will get a unilateral chronic reflex associated pyelonephritis. Like, see, if the ureter vesical wall of only this side is insufficient, then we will get unilateral lesion. And if the ureter vesical wall of both sides is insufficient and cannot oppose the backward flow, then we will get bilateral chronic reflex associated pyelonephritis. Like if, if only one valve is uh, affected and cannot oppose the obstruction, uh, yes, it will be unilateral. Unilateral. And if both sides are affected, then we will get a bilateral. Legion. That's.